Acts chapter 8. And so, in Acts chapter 7, folks, we have seen the first martyr of the church, and that is Stephen. Amen. Do you remember how he present the whole gospel from the book of Genesis to the present, if you would? How he present to the Sanhedrin, before the Sanhedrin, and, and, and my oh my, and then later on, he really told them something that is not pleasing to their ears and they basically stoned him to death. Amen. And this morning we are going to learn the first missionary of the church and that is Philip. And so, if you can still recall, a couple of weeks ago in Acts chapter 7, remember the young man named Saul? It says on verse 58 of Acts chapter 7, And they cast him out of the city and stoned him, that is Stephen. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. And Lord really, in a couple of weeks, we are going to learn the conversion of the Apostle Paul, or what we know, Saul, right now here. Now, uh, in chapter 8, verse 1, it says there, Now Saul was consenting to his death. Whose death? Stephen's death. The word consenting, folks, means approving, uh, agreeing, if you would, at Stephen's death. At that time, a great persecution arose against the church, which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. So in other words, the apostles, who were the apostles? The remaining 11, you know, Peter, James, John, uh, James, and so on and so forth. They remained in Jerusalem, if you would, in the area of Judea. But the rest of the uh, disciples, the followers of our Lord Jesus Christ, because of the persecution, they spread out. They left Judea, the region of Judea. Now it says here in verse 2, And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he had or he made havoc of the church entering every house and dragging of men and women committing them to prison notice folks in the time of acts the churches or when i say church they meet on houses it's not like this they don't have a building or they don't have a church that they rent just like us right now they go from house to house and i love the old church back then folks the settings is it's just and the idea there, folks, that I can see also, the beauty of that is just like their family. Their family. They have togetherness. Remember? We have studied that in the book of Acts. They have their togetherness. They're not like the type of church you come in and say hi on Sunday and then you leave. No, they have a relationship. They have accountability, if you would. But notice, folks, a devout man carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. Notice, this were devout men. I'm, I'm not sure if they were Christians. You know why? I just ask me why. Why, Pastor? Okay, thank you. You know why? Let me tell you this, because they look at death differently. Christians, we look at death differently, right? To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. That's why when Christians die, we might mourn for a period of time, but not a great lamentation. Are you with me? And so, now look at verse 4. Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Oh, I love that. So because of the persecutions, the disciples, the followers of Jesus, except the apostles, remain in Jerusalem, if you would, or in the area of Judea. The rest of the followers of Jesus, they spread out. Is that a good news or what? They did not just spread out. Folks, in my Bible, I have a highlighter and I highlight these words. 
preaching the word. Everywhere they go, they preach the word. Is that an application for us this morning or what? Yes. Right? Now, of course, here's the application that I want you to remember. The persecutions we are experiencing, it can lead to growth. The persecution that we are experiencing, it can lead to growth, folks. But it is up to us. If we take persecution as if, like, to discourage us or what, guess what? Then, <laughs> you got defeated by the enemy. That's what the enemy wanted. When persecution arises for us to stop. But we can make a choice. That whenever we are being persecuted, that can lead to growth. Amen. Amen. Now folks, another application that I can see here is this. Persecution shouldn't stop us. But rather, it should motivate us and move us forward. You see what happened to the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's some persecutions in their area. Guess what? If there's persecution here, it's okay for me to get out of here. Do you see that there? They left that place. But where they went, they made sure they preached the word of God. Amen? You see, folks, we need to have those kind of attitude. Sometimes persecutions arise and we go, Oh, we don't want to preach anymore because we might get persecuted again. No, I believe, folks, I believe God allowed this persecution to happen so that His will will be done. Huh? What are you saying, Pastor, that His will will be done in persecution? I will prove it to you in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Listen to the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in where? First, Jerusalem, and in all Judea, that is the region. Jerusalem is the city, and the city or the region where Jerusalem at is in Judea, okay, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Now, folks, at this point, in Acts chapter 8, the Christians were only ministering in the area of what? Jerusalem. The church is in the area of Jerusalem. And so God allowed the persecutions. Don't tell me God does, didn't know this persecution. Did you know whatever happens to you right now, God knows? Amen? And sometimes we ask why He allows it. You know, whatever you go through right now, perhaps persecutions, because it's in our context right now, you are being persecuted and God allows it, means for a better reason. So you have to get that opportunity and make the right choice of it. Amen? It's like persecution is here. Praise the Lord. God is moving me somewhere to preach. Amen? Because He said, from Jerusalem, then Judea, then Samaria, then to the ends of the earth. And this persecution moved the gospel forward. Hallelujah. Amen. How are you handling your persecution right now? Uh oh, now pastor, you're going to be are you going to be personal again? Oh, yes. You know, we can observe the text. We can interpret the text. We should apply the text also. How's your persecution right now? How are you handling your persecution? Does your persecution stopping you from preaching the good news or sharing the good news or from following the Lord? Brothers and sisters, no. This should energize you and motivate you. Amen? Amen. Now, look at this. Verse 5. Now let's talk about the first missionary now. Look at this. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preach Christ to them. <laughs> Remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ in Jerusalem, Judea. Now where is Philip at right now? Samaria. Just like what the Lord says. You are going to start on Jerusalem, Judea. They preach the gospel there, but they haven't moved forward to Samaria. And God used persecution. And now Philip 
is in Samaria. Now where is Samaria? Samaria is uh, located north of Israel, the ancient capital of the northern kingdom, just north of Jerusalem. Now that's why there's a region of Judea, or sometimes we know Judah. After Judah is Samaria. Now the people of Samaria, they were known as the Samaritans. Remember that? Remember the story in John chapter 4? You know, the woman, on the Samaritan woman on the well. You remember? So those, and let me give you a little bit of background of the uh, Samaritans and the Jews. The Jews, they don't like the Samaritans. Why? Now, in, in our text here, okay, that the, 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 in those times, not, I don't think now, you know, but in those days, they don't like them. You know why? Because the Samaritans were half Greeks, you know. They're half Jews, they say, and half Gentile. And as a matter of fact, if a Jew will come from north to, let's say, from Galilee, going to Jerusalem, and if you go down straight, you will hit Samaria. You know what the Jews will do in those days? They will go down south and make that big roundabout so that they will avoid the city of Samaria and the Samaritans. That's how they don't like each other. But because of the gospel, because of Jesus Christ, praise the Lord. Now, the follower of Jesus is in Samaria, what? Preaching. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes, with one accord, he did the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits carrying with a, or crying carrying, pardon me, crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. Now notice verse 8. Folks, underline these words, or I like this. And there was great joy in that city. Hallelujah. Is that awesome or what? Listen to me on this one, folks. Wherever Jesus was accepted, there is joy, there is healing, and there is change of life. Do you see that? Because the Samaritans embrace Jesus, the preaching of Jesus, if you would, the gospel of Jesus. Look, and there was great joy in that city. Notice, it's not just joy. There is a miracle. There is healing. There is change of life. Unclean spirits, you know, they were removed, if you would, from people. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? Wherever Jesus was accepted, there is joy, healing, and change of life. Amen. Now look at this. Verse 9. This is where it's a little bit kind of negative on the story right here. But we'll, we can learn some positive things here. But there was a certain man called Simon who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria claiming that he was someone great to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest saying this man is the great power of God oh my let us answer sorcery first what is sorcery sorcery is evil magic. It's not the magic that you see on TV, like David, whatever his name was, Copperfield, okay, and Angel Mind Freak, or something like that. I'll give you a magic. <laughs> not, nothing like that. See so you how know, my tongue, my, nothing like that. No, this is a evil magic. Now, Bible students, also sorcery in the Bible always has the connection with the occult and drug taking. The, the word pharmakia, you know, where we get our word 
pharmacies, okay? Or pharmacy, okay? So, so this man, Simon, was a sorcerer in that city, and the Bible says he astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great. So in other words, he's famous right now. He's very influential right now. The Samaritans listen to him. And whenever he does magic, and the, the Samaritans are like, whoa. And whatever he says, they believe, right? Notice, as a matter of fact, it says on verse 10, they say, this man is the great power of God. Folks, the Samaritans assumed that Simon had real power, right? Sometimes, folks, Bible students, listen to me on this one. Sometimes we are like that. Whenever we see power from a man or something, a demonstration of power, you will say, wow, that must be from the Lord. No, folks, don't conclude it right away like that. Are you with me, folks? Now listen to this on verse 11. And they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorceries, for a long time now the Samaritans folks were blinded by what they had seen on Simon do you see that the Bible said we have to walk by faith and not by sight you see if we continually walk by sight folks we are going to be deceived like the Samaritans are you with me? Can I hear you mention to that? If you walk by sight, folks, you are so vulnerable to being deceived by the simony, if you will. The Simons. Are you with me? The simony. <laughs> you are always going to, or you probably wanted to go to church where there is a show so that you will believe. No, folks, it's not like that. Remember, Pharaoh's magician can imitate Moses' miracles in the book of Exodus, right? Are you with me? Now, and listen to 2 Thessalonians, folks. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. Listen to this. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of who? Satan. With all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of what? Of magic? Or of the truth, right? That they might be what? Saved. So folks, is that a warning for us or what? How can we apply this now into our lives? Folks, let me tell you this. Don't just believe a man because he can do signs and wonders. The Bible said, test all things. See where he gets that power. Are you with me? Another lesson here that I see is this. Signs and wonders would mean nothing if the truth of God was not being taught. What is the signs and wonders, really, if there's no truth of God behind that? That would be for nothing. Amen? Are you with me? I mean, we know already, angel, my freak, I mean, no offense, just in case he's listened, he listened to the way of internet. I mean, that's a magic. I'm not talking about sorcery. He can do, he can flow. Last time I flow, you know, I hurt my ankle. I'm just getting careful. I can look, I only jump this high, you know. And so, anyway, but see, people back then, if you put angel mind trick back then, how would they going to believe him too because he can do this? But you have to know the truth behind that. Amen. Amen? So that you are not going to be deceived by the simony, if you will. Now the verse 12. But when they believe, fill it. As he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, notice, both men and women were baptized. Hallelujah. That is awesome there, folks. Do you remember 
Philip. Philip was one of the seven deacons who were chosen to minister to the widows in Jerusalem. Amen? He's the colleague of Stephen, but Stephen was stoned to death, and now Philip is right here ministering. Remember, in, in chapter 6, verse, uh, verse 3, um, the, the apostle says, Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we appoint over this business. And so we know that Philip had a good reputation and filled with the Holy Spirit. And right now, because of the persecution in Jerusalem, he moved to Samaria and preached the Word of God there. And he started converting the Samaritans from Samaritans to Christians right now. Amen. Is that awesome or what? And notice it says here, and they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God. Now, Philip, notice, did not win them by miracles, signs, or wonders. He won them by the preaching of the word of God. And the Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Amen. That's why, folks, here at our church, we have to be in a one mind, one accord, that on this pulpit, we are just going to preach and teach the Word of God. Amen. Now notice, the Samaritan believed Philip's preaching concerning the kingdom of God and Jesus, not by sorcery, not by miracles, not by signs and wonders. But folks, when they believe the preaching of Philip, folks, the result, both men and women were baptized. Now listen to me on this one. Folks, my beloved brothers and sisters, man's conversion to Christianity is far greater than signs and wonders. Man's conversion to Christianity is far greater than signs and wonders. Amen? Did you know the Bible says, <clears throat> if one soul will be saved, the whole myriad of angels out there in heaven are rejoicing. You know? And you can perform miracles or signs and wonders here that will be nothing. You know, but if you were able to <clears throat> direct a person to receive Jesus as his Lord and Savior, huh? the angels out there in heaven rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Verse 13. Then Simon himself, the sorcerer, excuse me. Can you put it on mute, please? <laughs> Hello? Okay, it's good to go. <laughs> Let me take a shot of my cold water. Mm. Now verse 30. Then Simon himself also believed, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip, and was amazed seeing the miracles and signs which were done. Now, the sorcerer, the Bible says, believed and was baptized and continued, in other words, continued following and seeing the miracles and signs which were done. He was amazed of these things. Now the verse 14. This is a little bit technical here, okay, the following verses, so I want you to hear very carefully. And when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive what? The Holy Spirit. So the Samaritans believed. They were believers already. Are you with me? But they need to be baptized with the Holy Spirit or need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. And so they sent Peter and John 
to them so that they can pray for the Samaritan believers. Now look at verse 16. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. Now, for as yet he, the Holy Spirit, had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Let me pause there right now. Folks, is this technical here or what? Please say yes, this is technical right here. Folks, what is this supposed to mean? When they're believers already, what do you mean by this then? See folks, listen to me on this very carefully. When we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we receive His Holy Spirit in us. Amen. Amen. Is that true? Right? Amen. But the empowering and baptism of the Holy Spirit, it seems to me, is different here. Okay? That is why Peter and John was sent to pray for them. They had come down to Samaria to pray for them, the Samaritan believers, for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, underline these words on your Bible, folks. Um, verse 16, the word fallen and upon. The word fallen and upon. Let's, let's do a little bit of Greek word this morning. The uh, word fallen is epipto, but you don't need to write the word epipto. But this is more, more simple. The word upon is the Greek word epi, E-P-I, okay, epi. And we talk about that, and it was used also in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. The word epi right there. The word epi, or the, the Greek word epi, it means to overflow. So the Holy Spirit is in them, but the Holy Spirit has to overflow yes. upon them. Amen. Are you with me? It's just like, okay, here's, here's a believer. Remember the illustration I gave to you before? Here's a believer. You, you, when, when, or here's a person. When this person received Jesus, well, it's a styrofoam cup, but that's a person. Okay. Okay. All right. That receive Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Now, the water, let's pretend that's the Holy Spirit, okay? The Holy Spirit will be in that person. The water will be over there. But baptism of the Holy Spirit is different. The empowering of the Holy Spirit is just like you put this person in an, on an on a open faucet and that water just keeps on overflowing and overflowing, you know? That's why we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit over and over and over again, folks. That is the empowering of the Holy Spirit, amen? That's where the calling will come and, 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 and the gifting will come, if, 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 if you would. Are you with me, folks? Yes. So, that's why they sent Peter and John to pray for the believers that the Holy Spirit will overflow, will overflow. Are you with me, folks? Now look at verse 18. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money. Uh oh that's no good. Simon, the sorcerer, okay, who the Bible says believed, was baptized, and continued following Philip. When he saw this, John, you know, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, that anyone on whom I lay hands, they may receive the Holy Spirit. Now, folks, let us pause there. Essentially, what Simon wanted to be in charge of the Holy Spirit, he regarded the Holy Spirit as a power he could use as he will instead of a person who would rule his life. He thought it's just like it's just a power that he can use 
whenever he wanted to. He can give it to whenever he wanted to. As a matter of fact, he offered money. He's willing to buy it. Just like right now, you can buy the magician's book out there in the strip, amen? Right? Right? <laughs> and then you can go somewhere where people don't know it and, and, and you pay me something, I show you that, kind of like that. But that's what his heart, his heart, folks, it's not right. How do we know it's not right? Listen to the words of Peter. I'll try to make it soft, okay? When I read this, okay? But Peter said to him, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. Exclamation. You know how you read this, folks? But Peter said to him, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. Now the Phillips translation, it's a little bit more accurate, but it's not good for the ears. You know what, Philip? Translate this, folks. Now, Philip, not Philip the missionary. Philip the Bible translation now. Basically, to hell with you, Philip, and your money. That's what it is, folks. No matter how you turn it around, that's just how, how it sounds right there, folks. The power, the apostles, had was power from the Holy Spirit and that power cannot be bought or sold. Bible students, are you hearing? Did you hear that? You cannot buy the Holy Spirit. You can pray for the Holy Spirit to fill you. And He will do it. God will fill you with His Spirit if you just ask Him. You know? He will empower you if you just ask Him. You know? But notice the motive here. Basically, it's wrong. Oops. I gave you the lesson already, the motive. <laughs> so, look at verse 21. Peter continues saying to him, You have neither part nor portion in this matter. Why? For your heart is not right in the sight of God. See? Philip, or Peter, was able to discern that. Now, perhaps there are some of us here would say, or back then, would say, hey, you know, he's a new believer. Easy on him, right? No. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They say, yeah. okay, right? I mean, sometimes we're like, oh, he's a new believer. Then let's be easy on him. No. It's the most gentle way I think you can tell people, hey, you know what, you're wrong on this one. You see, folks, the truth, sometimes, sometimes, we are becoming too soft Christians. I believe that, folks. Sometimes we are trying to become, oh, let us be politically correct. Or, folks, you can be straightforward, but just be tactful. You know, how do you say things? Amen? And sometimes what you're saying is true, but the way you deliver it, it's offensive. Then guess what? <laughs> Those ears where you deliver it, it will be like, I don't care if he's right, but I'm offended the way he said it to me. But you have to say it properly, you know. But what Peter is saying here is, he says, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You know what, folks? Can I say this to you? Simon the sorcerer represent those people who talks Christianese okay, in the church. I'm trying to be soft here, okay? Those people in the church who talks Christianese, who does all the Christian outward signs, such as in the case of Simon, the baptism, if you would. Are you with me? As a matter of fact, in verse 13, we read, he believed and got baptized and he followed. But the very reason he does these things, folks, was for money and fame and power. If you look at this, 
if you look at this, this text, folks, Simon was so used to having influence among the Samaritans. Amen? And when Philip showed up preaching the gospel, now they received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They believed Jesus. Now they were baptized by Jesus. And now Simon says, uh oh, now I don't have a choice. If you can beat them, you join them. You know? Kind of like that. So I wanna, that's why he, want, he wanted to follow so that he can be. You know, so he can inject himself to that power. That's why he's willing to even pay the apostles for that. So his intention is wrong. His motives were wrong. It's for influence, power, and money. Did you know a lot of simony in the churches right now? What, what I mean by that simony? You know, a lot of people are trying to buy the office of the churches. That's scary, folks. You have to be called by God. Amen. That's why I always emphasize to you Bible students that you have to know your calling. And if you know your calling, for me, I mean, the Lord called me as a pastor teacher. Then I should just focus on that. You know, I don't have to focus on the things that God did not call me. Because I know if I try to be someone else from where God you know what he called me. Guess what? I'm not going to be uh, uh, effective on that. Amen. Perhaps I am going to be offensive more. Are you with me? And so that's what Simon wanted. He wanted power, fame, and perhaps uh, money, wealth. Are you with me? His motives were revealed in verse 18 and 20. Now the verse. 22. Peter is still talking to Simon the sorcerer. He says, Repent therefore of this your wickedness, and pray God if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven. See, Peter was saying something is wrong with your heart, bro. You know? Yes, you're saying you believe Jesus. You were even baptized in the name of Jesus. You followed Philip in his teaching. Guess what? Something's wrong with your heart. Something's wrong with your heart. Folks, that's what Peter is saying here. So you repent and pray for forgiveness. Verse 23. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness. The word bitterness there, folks, it means extreme wickedness. And bound by iniquity. Then Simon answered and said, Pray to the Lord for me, that none of <clears throat> the things which you have spoken may come upon me. So he was asking Peter to pray for him. No, you pray. You pray. Peter says, You repent and pray and ask for forgiveness. Now, folks, what happened to Simon the sorcerer? I don't know. Did he continue following Jesus or is just one of those people who just like follow for two, three months and then done because they can have what they want. You see sometimes folks, there are Christians, they say they, they only follow Jesus because they thought Jesus is Santa Claus. Are you with me? If Jesus will not give them what they want, guess what? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Folks, it's not about that. Amen? Christianity is not about that. We know God will bless us. We know God will bless us. But God knows also what's in our heart. Amen? What's the real motive why we are all here right now? Folks, sometimes, folks, our motives is not right. Amen? Right? You know, sometimes people, we as people, I'm not going to exclude us, we as people in general, we do things. We do things really, folks, for a different motive, not really glorifying to God. I pray that all of us will be touched by that, by this message. You know? And so, look at this. Verse 
25. So when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, that is Peter and John, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. Did you know? Before they won't even go there. But now they're in the area of Samaria, the Samaritans, and preaching the word of God. And as we go on in the book of Acts, we will see the word of God will be preached all over the place. Beyond Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. It will go to Turkey, to Europe, and all that. Okay? Are you with me, folks? Now, let me say this to you. Simon believed, he got baptized, and followed for a wrong motive. If the motives of believing, baptizing, following is wrong, then these will be for nothing. Are you with me, folks? God knows who are these kind of people. The sign of Now, let's have some heart checkup right now. That okay? Let's have some heart checkup. Some questions that I would like to give to you that I asked myself this morning. Because if I ask myself, these questions this morning, I felt like I should ask you these question, all, questions also this morning so that you will know where you are. You know, what is the reason why I believe Jesus? I ask myself that. What is the reason why I believe Jesus? And so I wrote down the answer. I, I will prove it to you. I have it right here, right there. They're on red letter, okay, for me. So I, my answer is. I am a sinner who need a Savior. I need a Savior. That's why I open my life to Jesus Christ. I need Him. Because I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. And if your reason is, I want to be blessed in so many things and so, so, so on and so forth, you know. And so I can be rich. I want to follow Jesus because I want to be rich. I want to be famous. I want to be influential. Just like the reasons of Simon that I say to you, like the words of me, repent and ask for forgiveness. Amen. Then I ask myself, why I got baptized? You know. You know, my answer to that is because I wanted to obey Jesus' command. You know, it says when you believe, you know, make sure you are baptized also, you know. And did you know the baptism also is to show people that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. The outward symbol of the inner change, if you will. Are you with me? Now, the third one is this. Why do I continue to follow Jesus? Is it for the reason of the simony? Then my answer is this. Because I want to be more like Him. Amen. <clears throat> How many of you here wants to be more like Jesus? Right. I want to be more like Jesus. Every day. Folks, you know, I pray for us as a church that just personal but for all of us as a church is this listen to me that we are going to be more like Jesus now than yesterday if you are more Jesus like yesterday and not now you're in trouble we have to keep on on that pace that we need to be like Lord Jesus every day, every day. One step higher than yesterday. One step higher than yesterday. Amen? Amen, folks. So brothers and sisters, next week we are going to study again 
Philip, the first missionary, and the Ethiopian treasurer. Okay? Did you guys learn something? <coughs> Brothers and sisters, I pray that these things that we have learned, the Lord will bring these things into our lives. Amen? Will all we stand in this